Hey, my name's Farmer John at Happy Farm. We sell everything from cows, pigs, and sometimes even chickens. Stop by to eat at our amazing restaurant where everyone's happy. Do you love golf? Well, I love golf. I have something perfect just for you. Golf! We've got everything from golfing sticks to golfing balls. You can have all the golfing balls you want. Hi, have you or your friends been in trouble? Are you watching the Johnny Depp slash Amber Heard trial wondering, what? What is going on? That's my favorite actor. And also Johnny Depp. I know. Well, I am here and my name is Lawyer Leo and I will work personally for you for free for a fee, which is not free anytime you want. Pro boner, 365 days a day, 200 weeks a year, 24 minutes a week. I am Lawyer Leo and I am here to take your case. I am the best lawyer on YouTube because it's a very weird gray area and I feel like I can claim that even though I have no degree or anything close to it. All right. Today we are looking at the Johnny Depp side of things. And if you don't know what we're talking about, hopefully you've watched my other video on Amber Heard. If not, that's fine. What we are talking about today is the Johnny Depp vs Amber Heard trial that's been ongoing, the biggest trial since the OJ trial. And I'm not talking about Arnie Juice. <laughs> It's a little humor from the lawyer school. They tell you to be uh, charming. I'm I'm what they call charm free. Yeah, if you haven't heard about the case, uh, basically Johnny Depp is suing for an op-ed that was written about him by Amber Heard, which caused him to lose a lot of his career earnings and also subsequently the loss of the new Pirates of the Caribbean movie. And if you don't know much about Johnny Depp, he needs that money. It's fair to say that although I think most people watching the trial love Johnny, including myself, the man is not good with money. He's made $650 million in his career. Can you imagine making $650 million? I can't imagine making $650, right? <laughs> That's a lot. But you you know his expenditures that which we will see in this video have been super super exorbitant and he need the damn money but that's not why he's suing her he's suing her for defamation and the fact that his re reputation has all but been pretty much ruined and amber heard is counter suing for something so so today we're going to look at the johnny depp testimony and the cross-examination and everything as well we're going to hear from all the lawyers the ones that you like the ones that you don't like and everything in between I want to get started, but before I do, I think with every video I do on this, I just want to take a quick second to say my heart and support goes out to everyone who's experienced SA and DA. I hope that, you know, for Amber's sake, I always thought like, if you're telling the truth about this, then so be it. But I, I would always think that if you're lying about this, it very much marginalizes people who actually have gone through SA and DA and um, have had a hard time telling the truth or like being uh, listened to. And especially with a case like this, if someone's lying about it on national television or international at, at this point, it's pretty crazy. So my heart goes out to those who are suffering for that. And then for the guys, I just want to say that, yeah, you know, I, I know that uh, guys go through it too. I've personally had it happen to me, uh, the essay, not the DA. And it's not easy. Before we start the video, if you want to subscribe and help get to 500,000, I would love it. Uh, my dad thinks that I'm not a real lawyer and <laughs> I'm trying to prove that motherfucker wrong. Uh, also, if you want to follow me at 16leo underscore on my Instagram, you're more than welcome to do so. Tell me uh, what you feel about the case. Thank you. I'm in. Jesus Christ. Let's go. Good afternoon, Mr. Depp. Good afternoon. God damn, Johnny. Well, <laughs> I thought I thought that I was gonna like you more than Amber. I didn't expect. What's up, Chris? <laughs> oh, Johnny, calm down with the mic there, buddy. Can you please tell the jury why you're here today? Uh, Miss Heard made uh, some quite heinous and um, acts that were not based in any species of truth. So, uh, things that we'll need to know about Johnny Depp. One, famous actor, fantastic actor, disappears into the roles. Two, when he speaks, he takes a lot of time to calibrate his thoughts. He's not one that feels that he needs to prove anything to anyone. And if you look at any of his interviews, which I've done, I've done the research to make sure that I could give you the best video that I could do possible. He's had an illustrious career, so you can go back in time. And this is exactly how he talks. He hasn't changed. When we looked at Amber Heard's 2016 deposition, I looked at two things. I 
looked at how Amber spoke and it was completely different to how she's speaking now. And I looked at how Johnny spoke and it's completely the same as how he's speaking now. So he's very slow with his words. He uh, uses a lot of colloquial language, a lot of crazy language because he likes reading. He's um, very uh, vivid in his descriptions of things. And that is what you need to know. That doesn't mean he's lying because he's taking time to answer. It means he's thinking about it. My goal is the truth. Children, nor did the people who have believed in me for all these years. I, I didn't want anybody, any of those people to believe that I had done them wrong or lied to them or that I was a fraud. So yeah, Johnny really does like the kids and he often goes to the Make-A-Wish foundations and the places to help cheer up the kids there and he dresses up as uh, Captain Jack Sparrow. I was gonna call him Johnny Sparrow, my God. What happened to your finger? My finger? I bruised it very badly. I ate it, I bit it off. I'm starving. And he makes a joke and the kid doesn't look like she's buying it. But it shows a lot about his character that when he looks at his finger, he doesn't say something stupid or say, you know, my wife severed it. He just tries to make the best of a situation. And I think showing that character when she's not around just ap amplifies how good he comes off in that situation. That's crazy. Um, it's just a very interesting fact. There was physical abuse which could uh, be in the form of uh, an ashtray being flung at you. You'd get beat with a high heel shoe or a telephone or whatever is handy. Betty Sue, my mother, would go off. He, he amazingly remained very, very stoic. Never a moment when my father lost control and attacked my mother or hit my mother. Okay, so first thing that we do is we bull character because this is a defamation case. So the first thing that you do is your lawyers actual lawyers they ask you questions to try and build your character because what you're doing is you're trying to convince the jury that you are what you say so now they're going to uh explain johnny's background and why he does the things that he does now one thing that is certain in this case and that is self-admitted by himself is that johnny uses narcotics he uses substances that are not legal and he's very open about it i don't think he's once lied about it the reason why is actually just as important as why he would be doing it. Because oftentimes we just look at someone and we're like, oh, you're just throwing your life away. But you have to understand, like, maybe they come from a place that they saw it as their only escape. Listening to Johnny's story, uh, his mom was uh, the DA to him and, and, and really gave him a really hard time. And his pops was not seen as, as this father figure who, who fights back or who stands up to people. He was pretty uh, stoic and he was pretty reserved so maybe johnny growing up seeing that was not someone who was seen as you know i'm gonna be a fighter he, he might have taken the footsteps of his dad and saying that uh to start is really important because it sort of develops a base of his character in the beginning of my relationship with miss herod it's as if she were, it was she was too good to be true she was attentive she was loving um she was smart she was kind she was funny she was understanding i'm gonna obviously skip through some of the parts of this testimony it was about i don't know 14 hours in total it was a nightmare to sift through but essentially what he's doing is he said when he first met amber hood she was seen as this really beautiful loving and caring person which i think in any relationship we can agree you don't go in a relationship expecting bad things to happen at least of all things that might be illegal or borderline uh da basically. So you don't go in with those intentions. And when you meet someone new, they put their best foot forward. Nobody comes out swinging, so to speak. Sorry. Yeah. So now he's going on to possibly looking at the red flags. Oftentimes, when you're so head over heels of someone, they might just say it in plain sight like, hey, yeah, I take a shit on the floor. And you'd be like, that's so cute. Only after your first fight do you realize maybe you shouldn't be like the dog. Maybe, maybe do it in the toilet. I'm sorry. It was a euphemism, but that's the best I could do. She would sit me down on the couch. So I sat down on the couch and I took my boots off with this look on her face. That, that she, and she just said, what did you just do? You took your boots off. I said, yeah, yes, I did. No, no, no. That's my job. That's what I do. So if you watched the Amber trial or my video, one of the things that she said to start was that she liked taking off Johnny's boots. And that was anything she could do to show love. I'm not really sure how taking off someone's boots shows love. Um, I know everyone experiences love in different ways. But Johnny was saying that um, Amber actually got into a method of routine that if Johnny did it himself, 
she would get quite annoyed. And that's a little sign of being controlling at the start. And then she seemed to calm down after she took those nerve pills. So when I was 11 years old, um, I wanted to calm down. And I didn't know how to. So I, I'd bring my mom her nerve pill. I would walk away. And I would take one myself um, to escape feeling. Pretty young age to do that. I uh, can't say that I'm proud of admitting to that. But, but I, I have to say that I knew not what else to do. It's just plainly false. I mean, uh, it says a lot, you know, Johnny grew up in Kentucky, southern person. He said that his dad uh, and his dad's family were refined, but his mom was quite the opposite. And uh, it's not unlike the movie, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, a movie that Johnny Depp was in in his young career. It's crazy that the parallels of his life was sort of like how he grew up. It's kind of crazy when uh, to even think about a mom saying, get me my pills to a child. And a mom is your paternal figure. That is your that is your woman or like female upbringing. So if you only know that as a female upbringing and then you have someone like this, someone who you're letting close the love of your life and she's doing the same thing, it's kind of hard to see where the line is. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm not saying that I'm on Johnny's side, but I'm on his side, you know? So the next thing we get into is the meeting of Johnny Depp and Amber Hood. And they met on the set of a 2008 nine movie called the rum diaries made uh about his friend the late great hunter s thompson who is a famous writer and i guess uh yeah the person that they want to audition was amber hood now the thing that i really love about johnny's testimony is that he says that the director had auditioned amber hood five times he wasn't sure of her acting capabilities that is a nice way of saying ah oh, she's shit but she looks good for the part that is hollywood in a nutshell is it not Ah, you can't act, but you look good. That's, that's what it is. Uh, this, this one particular actress named Amber Heard, um, he said that he'd auditioned her five times. He wasn't sure about her capabilities. And she was sweet as pie, pleasant, again, you know, um, intelligent, literate, very good taste. When would you say your romantic relationship with Miss Heard actually began, if, if not in that moment? Well, I think there was something in the kiss, in the shower. A lot of this interview is sort of building foundation of Johnny's character as someone who is, you know, a lovely person. Johnny was quite a giving man. He let all of Amber Heard's friends and family stay in his apartments and houses free for years without asking anything of them. Now, this is a good, this is a good partner. I don't know, man. If my girlfriend said, hey, can my friends stay here? I'd say no, because you don't exist. I just, I'm just so lonely. I'm just lonely all on my own. <laughs> when did you start getting introduced to Miss Heard's friends after you started your relationship with her? Almost immediately. Well, in fact, immediately. Yeah, immediately. I, I was introduced to uh, the whole gang. You know, Rocky, Io, Brittany Eustace. Hey, Rocky. Hey, Adrian. I can imagine Rocky being Sylvester Stallone as Amber Heard's friend. Like, hey, Rocky. What's up? You like the Expendables? It's a good, it's pretty good, huh? For the record, this is an audio recording. We, it's um, quite lengthy, so we intend to play certain portions of it. So, um, now we're going to get into the audios. This is the most telling part, and both teams have audios of different things. I think the audio that uh, Johnny's lawyers play is way more telling than the lawyers of Ms. Hambo Hood. I, <laughs> I think it's pretty clear cut. But I, yeah, I wanted you guys to hear it too. This is some of the audios Johnny started filming when uh, they were mid dispute. I'm telling you if, you, if you lost memory last night of kicking me out the door with the fucker hitting me, again, and, you, sorry. and your memory is. I am sorry is, is pretty much admission of guilt at this point. Like, I know you can't maybe use it, but like, we don't have no other evidence. I am sorry suggests just after he said you kicked me, you kicked the door into my skull that she did it and is like, I am sorry that your stupid fat skull got in the way of my soccer skills. And yes, I say soccer because I'm an American. Otherwise, I'd say football like a regular human. Why are you obsessing over the fact that I can't remember it the way you remembered it? I said I was sorry. Okay, I didn't deny I it. Sure. I didn't deny it. She who didn't deny it supplied it. There we go. We got. We already got it on tape. Amber Heard decided to turn into a messy and kick the door onto Johnny's head. He later on goes to explain that the lead up to it was that she exclaimed in pain and he went to check her foot and she smacked, she kicked the door on his face. She, you got her on tape. What are we sitting here arguing about? This woman clearly did it. We're, I'm sorry. Do we need more? 
Just because I've thrown pots and pans does not mean that you come and knock on the door. I'm sorry, pots and pans throwing? Do you, that's scary. She's admitting to, she, so, so far we got her admitting to basically kicking Johnny Depp in the skull and also throwing pots and pans around like she's Gordon Ramsay on acid on a Wednesday. It's, it's not looking good. You punched me in the You're right. thing. And you, you figured it all out. And I, I didn't punch you, lie, and then I I didn't I punch you by then the way. You. Oh, psh. okay, finally. She didn't punch him, guys. She didn't. Thank you, Amber. Stand up for yourself. I'm sorry that I didn't uh, uh, hit you across the face in a proper slap, but I was hitting you. It was not punching you. Okay, um, objection to myself. Overruled, sustained to myself. I was not punching you, I was hitting you. This has, this has some energy to it. This has the same energy as I was not stabbing you. I was just inserting my knife into your belly button. I was not stealing your money. I was just increasing my wealth at the risk of yours. Thanks, Amber. With your, with your logistical and lawyer-like knowledge, I most certainly will end up in jail 10 times faster than I was supposed to. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this. But I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. She also admitted that uh, just because it wasn't open, it's like a closed fist. So now we have admittance of something being like this. So unless she was doing the fist bump it, and then she was like, yeah, I fist bumped his face. Like, oops. Seemingly, um, this is as clear cut as evidence as we're going to get into the case. I don't think I've heard anything like this in many cases before. You have the person just pretty much flat out saying, yeah, I did it. But I think it wasn't too bad. This is as this would be like OJ being like, yeah, I stabbed them. Fine, I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. How are you? How? What am I supposed to do? Do this? I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. Damn, she called him a bitch too. I'm not bitching about it like you. That's just she is just a piece of work, isn't she? Wow, 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 we. Um, yeah. Let me just go on the record and say that uh, it is not okay for a girl to do that to a guy. I know that was saying, like in, it's not okay in any sense, but let's be specific in this instance. Um, no, this this is not okay. When we're talking about you know a girl doing it, it's like. I don't want to hear any of these excuses uh, just because, you know, I'm a girl, I'm weaker, it doesn't hurt as much. Or I'm a girl, you, sh you know, I, get, I just lose my emotions. You have to be held to the same standard as us. I don't care if it's a little slap, I don't care if it's a little... Because you wouldn't want that happening to you. You wouldn't want a guy being like... You don't want that. So let's clear it on both ends. I don't care if it was even a little nudge. The idea of the act of her doing it is, is wrong. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. You're a fucking baby. God damn, what is this? Oh, she is a very unsavory creature, huh? I wonder how she's lo she's looking like pretty dead-eyed when we're looking at how um, the tapes are being seen. When you look at Johnny, he looks like he's grimacing and reliving that. It's just like, it seems like it's a tough experience. But with Amber, she's just like... You are such a baby! Grow the fuck up, Johnny! I did start a physical fight thing. You know what? You're admirable. All right. Well, come on, guys. We did it. We, we, we did it. <laughs> the, it's over, right? The case over, man. This is, the, this is the equivalent of now R. Kelly being like, Yeah, yeah I got, got a dungeon, dungeon and, and I have sex with people who are a year that, that I can't, can't say, say, but it's on the clock and a log. This is the same energy that she basically admitted to it. She admitted to it. Let's, 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 the case is over, right? The case is over. It's over. How are we even having this? Come on. You know Mr. Depp, could you please explain to the jury what they just heard on those audio recordings? That, 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 was, that was a sound that I had gotten very used to. The, the squabbling, the, you know, the, the raising of the voice to excommunicate anything that I had to say about uh, the situation. Can uh, I just take a second to break down? We'll be a little serious in this video as well, because I think it's important. Hopefully, you have watched the Amber Heard video I've done, or honestly, right now, if you just Googled Amber Heard's testimony, that would be fine. But if you listen to the way she tells stories, the way that she embellishes facts, that's, that's not how your memory or my memory works. You know, we were together for five years, almost four and a half. And uh, it was a very violent, chaotic, at times very loving, emotional 
uh, uh, relationship. Like, it was a beautiful sunny day. Remember, because I had a coat and my, my boobies were out and I was like, wow, it's really it's feeling a bit, you know, windy over there. And then she tells the story as if she wants you to believe all these minute details because she remembers them, so she must have been there. When you listen to Johnny's testimony, he's clear, concise, and the only thing that he makes mention of that has any like that has any vivid description is the things that are closing in on the incident because that's what you would remember. So all he knows is that I was trying to have a shower and she kept coming in. You know what I mean? Like he's not embellishing it. So it comes off as very much more truthful and it's succinct and to the point. And uh, it doesn't seem like he's trying to convince anyone. It just seems like he's trying to tell the truth when he was asked a question. She kicked uh, the bathroom door open. I stood up and I said, I think I said, what the fuck was that? The next move was just a bang. It was just, uh, she clocked me in the jaw. I gotta give Johnny points for like, <laughs> she was like, Mike Tyson, bah! Evander Holy, bah! Sugar Ray. Fatality. You can have a seat. Cross-examination. Morning, Mr. Depp. So that was the first segment. Johnny's team basically built character. The second part of this uh, testimony is when he gets cross-examined and Amber's lawyers get to grill or roast him. They try and do the most uh, sort of undo any character building and convince the jury that indeed he is a pretty horrible, rotten man. <laughs> you see what I did there? therapy um so i've looked at amber's lawyers and i can't figure out what their strategy is because whenever they pick a point uh they'll be like johnny you've been drinking right and he'll he'll be like yes yes i have and they just move on for some reason their lawyers have nothing more to say and i think it's because they know that they're holding on to literally a thread of evidence and nothing else i think the worst you can say is that johnny has a pretty uh grotesque sense of humor and oh, that's not illegal so, I don't know. But now we're going to hear from the world's greatest lawyer, Jason Rottenburn, or against J. Depp. Uh, two days ago, when you first took the stand, you discussed your upbringing and some of the abuse that you suffered at the hands of your mother. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Balls weren't the only thing that your father punched, were they? In fact, once he, he punched you in the face and knocked you down, didn't he? One morning, yes, he, uh, it rattled my head, it rattled the cage, you know, free sure. birds and stuff, sure. So the, the jury hadn't heard about that before. When, when he punched you in the face, it actually knocked you to the ground. And then when you got up, you were all too happy to take care of what he wanted you to take care of, right? I was excited to take care of it. Right. Point. And yesterday, now you try to conduct yourself as a gentleman, right? So Mr. Rottenburn is now grilling Johnny. He's saying yeah, your mom seemed pretty bad, but also your dad also, uh, you know, he gave you the beats and then you were okay to do things. So far, doesn't really, that's not a point in its favor. I'm not sure what this has to do with anything, Mr. Rottenburn, but go on. Yes, sir. And you think that you live up to the standards of a Southern gentleman? Yes, raised to be a Southern gentleman, that is to say, when chivalry was uh, still alive and allowed. Right. I certainly have done my best all my life. Paul Bettany's a good friend that you've done drugs with, right? That's a strange question. Oh, yeah, what a weird question. That I didn't cut that. That just came, that was back to back. You think that you're a sudden gentleman, right? Yes, yes I am, I think so. Well, surely you you and your friend Paul Bettany been doing drugs. That's pretty crazy and ain't no sudden gentleman be doing drugs. I'm not really sure the line of questioning. This this is the tactic of what? That's it's one of the most rare tactics ever used by lawyers because it has a success rate of minus 2%. Um, Paul Bettany is a good friend. You've done drugs with him? Yes, I have. Okay. Sounded like he was gonna, like he's confronting him. You've done, do you've done drugs with him? Yes. Paul Bettany's a good friend? Yes. Why wasn't I invited? Because I don't know you. Objection. Friendship. You remember giving testimony in um, the trial in the UK, correct? Yes. Uh, we'll quickly gloss over the trial of the UK. Johnny Depp actually was sued uh, by a different company. Uh, he was also sued by his uh, management and a couple other things. You know, it's Hollywood. Things like this happen. I don't think that any of that has any, any relevance to this case, least of all the fact that we're dealing with defamation. None of those, I believe, are the same thing. But uh, Mr. Rottenburn is going to pull from it and he basically cherry picks. Well, this is what lawyers do. They basically give you the worst and try and make you out to be a character because Mr. Rottenburn's goal is to try and make Johnny Depp seem like a liar and someone who has not told the truth so that the jury will look at him and be like, ugh. 
He's exactly like Jack Sparrow. I don't like him. And your answer is yes, there could have been Xanax, or if he needed, if he asked for Xanax or Adderall, whatever, I would of course give it to him. Did I read that right? Yes, you read it right. And you shared, um, the two of you shared an enjoyment of controlled drugs or alcohol at that time, right? Objection, where is this going? Oh, so yeah, this is the angle. This is the acute angle that they're doing. Uh, Johnny was someone who used narcotics. And because he used that, they're going with the classic, because he used that, he must also be someone who loses his temper and mind. Because if he does something, one thing illegal, it has to correlate to the other things. Yes, because if I'm jaywalking, I'm also just as illegal as the person who is uh, committing arson. Thanks. This this is some real good lawyering. You did you did you pass the bar school of I went to the bar and couldn't leave because I was too drunk? Is that is that where you went? Because that seems to be where you went. Let's turn to uh, Michelle. Can, Michelle. Could you please blow up the first text at the top? You text Mr. Bettany. Let's burn Amber. Okay, so uh, now we're going to bring up some evidence. Mr. Rottenborn likes to bring up evidence and then not actually follow up on it. He's just like, you said this, right? Okay, and then you said this too, right? Okay, and also, did you say this? Okay, well, uh, well how about this? That's, that's his whole... I don't know why they even paid him. He should have just sat with his luncheon and ate it at the courtroom because I, I don't get what he's even trying to achieve. But, yeah, they have some of Johnny Depp saying some texts that are questionable. They do. They got him. He said some questionable things. I'll tell you what, man. If you go through my text history, you're going to see some of the most questionable stuff. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I said, can you use a balloon as condom before? I, hey, man, I'll be the first to admit it. It's crazy. It's a crazy world. And if you're going to get my text, then yes. But yeah, um, a text is not necessarily evidence and the context is required. So You said, I will fuck her burnt corpse afterwards. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes. And you wrote that about the woman who would later become your wife. How you think she became his wife? Was well, smooth talker like that? Oh my god. My panties just dropped and I'm not even wearing any. You want to do what to me? Oh. I'm going to properly stop the booze thing, darling. Oh, hey. If I was on Amber's team, I would have questioned that a little more and been like, Johnny, what did you mean? Who are you referring to? Huh? Well, I would have maybe asked a couple more questions. It seems like Mr. Rottenburn is just like, you did say that. Okay, my lawyering is done for the day. I, I got him to admit that he did say a text that he wrote. I admittedly too fucked in the head to spray my rage on my love. For little reasons as well. I'm too old to be that guy. Yeah, I've sprayed my rage on people that I love. Whew, man. They liked it. Um, does this have anything to do with the case? Is this him saying that uh, he's done anything? Is this an admission of anything? Because clearly the first thing is in hyperbole. Because she's still there. I, I don't think Johnny has, and I quote, fucked her corpse since she's alive. And I don't think he's burnt her since she's well and truly pretty quite. <laughs> You're going to talk about Pulse? Does this have anything to do with anything? So far, the evidence is stacked up against Amber because she's admitted to putting her hands on this man in a capacity of uh, violence. My darling Patty Lee, I miss you and worship you and there's nothing wrong between us. Never ever could that happen. I've just been so beyond busy with film here in Boston and then back to LA for kitties. When I was in NYC, they were brief visits and fucked and charged by horrific fights with Amber. I fucked up and drank and got shitty. Actually, almost walked to your place at about 3.30 a.m. the last time I was there, unable to stop he tears. Okay, so yeah, you got something from Patty Lee. I don't know who that is, but uh, yeah, I read the whole message. You could pause and read it too if you want to. Where's, is there anything there? That, is this evidence? Or is this you just pulling up a random text? You want me to pull up a random text? Okay, I'll do it. I'll pull up a random text. You want me to do that? I right. here. I won't lie. This reminds me of those 40 plus year old men who try and re relive their youth by cashing out on a new whoop. The second one is classy and more modest. You think the second then? Yeah, the second one looks better. Otherwise, the first would be cool for driving around in Cleveden. I mean, what are you, what are we just pulling random text? Because that has nothing to do with anything. Just because it mentions her name. I can mention her name. Now am I suddenly in the case? Gosh. 2013, Mr. Depp, you texted the following. For the idiot cow, I'll smack the ugly cunt around before I let her in. Don't worry. And then you close by saying, did that worthless hooker arrive? Did I read that right? God, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, but that looks pretty bad. I'm, I'm no loyal, but uh, 
This is not an admission of anything, Mr. Rottenborn, especially since there are no names being mentioned. And uh, he later clarifies that it's not about Amber. Therefore, this is irrelevant information. So I'll just, okay, I'll yeah. just stop talking. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I want to be Certainly respectful of the court's problem, time and the, and the jury's time. Um, Sorry? I just said I want to be respectful of the court's time and the jury's time, and I, I trust that you do too. So Yeah, uh, that's basically Mr. Rottenborn's thing. He's like, I want to be respectful of the court's time. Then every everything he ever shows gets redacted, and he spends 10, 20 minutes cutting it out and stuff. This is in four times speed of him actually trying to find something. I'd like to direct your attention to these nuts. <laughs> the Peruvian period is a reference to cocaine, is it not? Yes, it is. I'm sorry, you said yes, it is? Yes, sir. He said yes, it is. Are we on trial for Johnny Depp being a mountain of Peruvian blow? Is, is his nose on trial? I thought we were talking about DA, not you being a, a DA type person, man. What, what, what's up? Yes, it is, yeah. Love you, brother. Let us reward ourselves for the hard work and misery of the heat that we push ourselves to conquer every goddamn day. The shatter. Did I read that right? You did. You did. Absolutely, bro. Loved. Listen, I love that he keeps checking in with Johnny to see if his reading skills are on par. Great. You know, you got a second grade education. That's fine. But I don't know what this has to do with the case. I don't know what Johnny Depp's extracurricular affairs have to do I, they don't bleed in to the case in any shape way or form amber said that she did not like him partaking in like that was narcotic and affairs like that fine so be it maybe that's a point of contention but it never gets brought up beyond that in fact there are times when she's said to have been smoking marijuana doing mdma other things so if for a person to be like, I don't want you doing that, and then she's doing it, it kind of seems hypocritical. And again, neither of them are on trial for that. I didn't bring it up in her case. Now, why are they bringing it up in his? Um, one, of, one of your good friends that you've taken drugs with before is Marilyn Manson, right? I once gave uh, Marilyn Manson a pill uh, so that he would stop talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> Big love to you, my brother. Sorry. All right. Um, they're bonding. <laughs> you hear that at the end? He laughed. Mr. Rottenborn laughed and he was like, <laughs> I get it. What did that mean, bro? I need to put you on the stand. What do you mean? I get it. What? You've seen this picture before, Mr. Depp, right? Uh, yes, I have. And this is a picture that was taken in uh, Miss Hurd's um, former house or apartment on Orange Avenue after you two began dating, correct? Yes, sir. And it's, uh, it's quite a composition. It, composition of the photograph is very interesting. I, I, I think that's something we can agree on. Um, big love to you. Every day I would come home to her place. And, and wonder what the fuck is that picture? Because if we take a look at it, it's quite the worst picture uh, that I've ever seen. She, she did testify and she was like, that's Johnny's thing and that's, you know, his CD and that's his shot glass. And it has nothing to do with anything. Yet again, Amber Heard was caught giving... Uh, yet again, Amber Heard was caught giving evidence to the lawyers who didn't want to accept it. Just don't get how this is evidence in any way, shape, or form that he has done anything to her. Let's look at page 202. One, six, I'm, so, uh, I'm having trouble finding 202. Are you, are you saying page 2 oh, because there's no 202? That, no, I, that's my fault. It's day 2, so I owe you another transcript. I'm sorry, my apologies. Oh, I thought you was everybody wasting the court's time over here, my brother. What, what's up with you? <clears throat> I thought Mr. Depp was wasting time by answering questions that you asked. Now you're giving him fake papers? Well, you gave him your driver's license from 1943 when you actually took the test? What, what is this? Why are we, why are we doing this? Can you... How about, how about they put a timer on you and you only get a certain amount of time to ask these shitty questions? I haven't heard you ask one serious question. It seems to me that you don't have a case. Big love to you, my brother. And I apologize for that, brother. <clears throat> and on line 11, are you there? Are you there? Where the fuck are you? Mr. Depp? Mr. Hello? Mr. Depp? Are you, are you there? <clears throat> are you kidding? 
Are you watching the case right now? Look up. And when you first started seeing her after that couple year um, uh, period of not seeing her, you had just been checked out of a New York hospital um, where you had been for a couple days to fight alcohol use, correct? Objection, relevance, objection. Uh, is this going to be the only uh, angle that they're going on? Objection. This has nothing to do. Is that what you're trying to do? You're trying to say that Johnny lost his case. He lost everything because of his own uh, sobriety problems. Have you show me some articles? Show me things that say that he lost his job on certain sets. Because as far as I can see, he's one of the most bankable stars there ever was in Hollywood history. I haven't seen him go through a period where he wasn't making movies. He was always making goddamn films. And I, I just don't think that unless you could bring up an article that says, yeah, we fired him because he didn't turn up to set and he wasn't able to do it. That's the only thing you got. Ah, finally, we have some audio of Amber. Hopefully, this will make her seem like she's a good person. Let's see. I, was gonna die. I thought you would choke on your own vomit, which is very likely with you. Really? Yes. Very likely. But I vomit a lot? Yes. What? Yes, you do vomit a lot. Do you sleep even more? Really? Oh, it's news to you? Then this is affecting you a lot more than I thought it was. Um, okay. Um, two things. One... I'm not going to get into this, but I suffer with a condition that revolves around throwing up. Uh, I can tell you very, 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 a hundred thousand percent that you would be awoken by that. Unless, of course, you were on heroin or some other very, 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 very heavy, heavy drug. If you're at a point where you can't function and you're doing that, then uh, yeah, yeah, I don't think you'd be on a Pirates of the Caribbean set or anywhere near Hollywood at that point. You'd be, you'd be under the bridge, so... And that's, um, that's ice cream on your lap, correct? It is indeed. Uh, okay. Ms. Hurd asked me to hold the ice cream as she noticed that I was on, on the nod. That means falling asleep um, from the 17-hour day that I'd worked and also the opiates that I'd ingested. Um, okay, well, Johnny admits to opiates and also saying that he walked a 17-hour day. The evidence is that Johnny Depp fell asleep with the ice cream. I'll tell you what, man, I have not even ever tried opiates, and I've worked a 17-hour day before. My ass is in the air, and my face is somewhere else. I don't even know what's happening until the next day I wake up and I feel like, wow, what the hell's going on? And I was completely sober. Doesn't mean that I am a bad person just because I have ice cream stains on me. And that was a wonderful picture to take for her. Sure. I so, don't know why she took it. But... Well, so it's Miss Hurd's fault that that picture was taken. Uh, yeah, well, she took it, so I guess if you want to phrase it like that, correct. It would be her fault that it's taken. You can phrase anything like that. It's your fault that you had the kid. Yeah, yep, I guess so. It's the joy of having a child, but also it's my fault as well. I put it in you. I you've trashed hotel rooms before simply because you've had a bad couple days and an unpleasant time, correct? I have assaulted a couch or two. Yes, sir. Oh, that's a stretch. That's a str that's a stretch mark stretch. That's a I went from twenty kgs to one hundred twenty kgs type stretch mark stretch. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Just because he kicked the couch, that doesn't mean that just because you're smacking an inanimate object that you are now a person of violence. Okay. I'd like to to shift gears and and talk about a um, talk about Hicksville. You, you remember taking a trip to a place called the Hicksville Trailer Palace in late May 2013, correct? I do indeed. I hope that I forget. And p the people, this is, it's like a little mini trailer resort out near Palm Springs. It is called Hicksville. I think that is pretty self-explanatory, my guy, but go on. Joshua Tree area? That's correct. All right. Well, in fact, you, you, Kelly Sue, you recall, was sitting... Oh my God, they even have two names. Kelly Sue, Patricia Roberts. Oh my God, they got Kelly Belly. Girlfriend. And so you removed Kelly Sue's hand from Amber and you yelled at Kelly Sue and told her that Amber was your girl, right? Okay, so now we're going, and I want to compare those stories. I always think that uh, it's good to have this comparison. I remember Amber Heard saying that Johnny Depp took uh, this person's hand and he bent it back as if he was like a jujitsu or kung fu expert. Like, and he said, do you know how many, how much... Oh, I'm trying to remember what she said now. Something about, do you know how many bones there are in a, a wrist that I could just break? So he turned into like Karate Kid Part 3. 
But in this recount, Johnny Depp is obviously saying something different. I removed Miss Kelly Sue's hand from Miss Heard's body, and I told her, do not do that. That, first of all, that is my girl. Second of all, it is rude and invasive. So, right, so nothing about breaking a wrist as if you're like in the Bourne legacy and you're auditioning for Matt Damon's role? Nothing about that? All right. Before the flight, and uh, sorry if we covered some of this, but just to orient the jury. I like how he's just skipping past things. He doesn't talk about the trailer that was said to have been trashed that Amber said. We don't have any proof of that. That would have been a point of contention. We don't have anything about the testimony of the witness. Why didn't you bring her in? Or maybe been like, oh, okay, what happened to her? Uh, there's a lot of incidents that Amber explained that are just not being talked about. Like, how about the headbutt incident? Johnny was said to have headbutt this girl. He also was said to have picked her up by her hair and flung her around. Also, he kicked her on the plane. What about, where, where are all these things? I want to see you dispute those claims. Because they're pretty empty without you actually, uh, saying anything back. To the sequence of events. The night before the flight, Miss Heard was in New York. And you were picked up in Boston by private jet. You and Miss Heard had a heated discussion on the phone about scenes that she was doing in a movie with James Franco, right? I don't recall what the uh, argument was about. There was, there are many to. Uh... Let's go to page 293. And you suspected that Amber was having an affair with James Franco, correct? Motherfucker. That was uh, the reason for your argument. Um. Yeah, yes. Uh, well, uh, let's not gloss past the fact that TMZ actually did something right for once and did catch them in an elevator, sn uh, being pretty snug. Now, I don't know if that means they were having a relationship or an affair, but certainly that looks like it is a little suspicious, a little sussy buck up. And I gotta be honest, man, James Franco is not the... The cleanest person in Hollywood, if you look at any of his allegations, this dude probably should actually be on trial at some point because it seems to me he's really the person who needs to be checked. This is a recording, um, and I, I'd be happy to read. We're going to play three, three uh, excerpts from it. You did it, Mr. Rottenbone. You did it. You solved the case. You got him. That's him. That's he's turning into the werewolf, and now he's going to do werewolf things. Oh, he, that was Hugh Jackman. My bad. Sorry, sorry about that. You did it. You did it, Mr. Rottenburn. You proved that Johnny Depp might not be as good a singer as he thinks he is. Uh, you did it. You got. You cracked the case wide open, buddy. Go back to your house and drink champagne in your lonely, only house. Okay. Go back to your condo. Uh, in Rwanda, bro. Come on, man. That's your voice making those moaning sounds. Motherfucker. Sound like an animal in pain, right, Mr. Depp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sound like an animal, yeah. You sound like a giraffe who got his testicles just kicked. I don't even know if giraffes have testicles. Why don't you look that up in your spare time, Mr. Rottenbutt? Mr. Depp, do you know who the male voice is um, who at around 941 says, no, I'm going to stay with this fucking idiot in case he gets sick? I, I don't know if you heard any of that. I thought I was going crazy. I actually rechecked it. I didn't even hear even close to what Mr. Rottenbone heard. I think at this point in his head, a demon just came in and was like, Hey, make some shit up. I, I just don't know where he got that from. I feel like he pulled it from thin air. Mr. Depp, this is in this text that you send to Page Heard. Amber's mom. Morning, everyone. I hope you had a nice weekend. Um, so, yeah, at the end of day one, <sighs> Mr. Ronburn ends by sending uh, or giving evidence to a text that Johnny read and sent to Amber's mom saying that he thanked Amber for helping him get sober. He also called Amber's dad a sweet fucker. I seriously don't know if this is all that Amber's lawyers are going to do because this is not proving that he's done anything. This is very sad, stupid evidence that has no bearing on the case. Bringing up 10, 20 things, that Amber needs Saul Goodman on her team to even have a chance at winning at this point. Mr. Depp, we've talked about this uh, a little bit, but you've testified that abuse can come in many forms, correct? Physical being one of them. Uh, yes, indeed. Emotional? Indeed. Verbal. Indeed. Uh, well, how about, uh, you know, abuse of listening to you state 
uh, types of abuse. How about that? How about you rapping? How about your son having a rapping career and calling himself J Rotten Man? How about that? That's pretty bad. How about that suit that looks like it's a bit too big for you? Put your fucking cigarettes out on someone else. You fucking have consequences for your actions. That's it. Shut up, fat ass. Shut up, fat ass. That's beautiful. I'm sorry, man. If that's an insult, then I have been insulting people for the longest time. People I like, too. Like, damn, girl, you got a fat ass. Like, this is nice. Um, so now we're claiming that Johnny Depp uh, put a cigarette out on her. I would venture that if a cigarette was put out, you'd hear it in, oh, oh man, or anybody, you'd hear it on the audio. Ah! Because uh, I would venture to say that the cigarette is hot enough to evoke some sort of visceral and also audio reaction to be like, Oh, I think that maybe she's embellishing it a little bit and maybe he threw I ash at her or maybe the cigarette. After I had dumped you a fucking week, week prior. A fucking week prior, after you beat the shit out of me, and then a week later you show in my show up at my doorstep in my room saying you want to say goodbye. Okay, say goodbye. Oh, I said it. Yes, you did say it. You didn't say that to me. Well, I won't do it again. What's a mistake then? Didn't. It's fair to say that when you're drunk, you do a lot of questionable things. Like for instance, watching a 14-hour case, and uh, I don't know, not eating for the last week. <laughs> Hey man, when I was drunk, the last thing I did, I think I woke up with like a rubber ducky around my pee pee. But I gotta say, I, I, I don't think that you should have listened to me if I said anything during that time. Did you or did you not say you're coming over to say bye? Can we please pull up exhibit 598, fat ass? Oh, 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 you're not even gonna question him? Amber said, uh, you gave me the beats by Dre. No, no questions? I hate to tell you how to do your job, but you're doing a really bad job. So what you think? You just do it without thinking. You do it without thinking, huh? You don't. Get him. Did someone drop something? I was sorry, I was zoning out. Now I'm, I'm back. I'm back in the game, baby. Let's do it. You throw a swing when you can. And what win better than to win on the floor? Because that's when it's really good to hit someone. Can you please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 366? Oh, again, well, you're gonna not question him about, she said, uh, when you're on the floor, hit someone, you're not gonna question, okay then. This is like someone going into a store and being like, hey, can I have a shovel? Uh, it's like a couple bodies and I just, it's kind of hard. And the person being like, what kind of shovel? Please, what? I, um, Johnny Depp was, uh, you know, Using the classic Australian greeting to say that, you know, a greeting of love, of compassion, cunt. He was basically saying that because Amber said uh, in everywhere they go, she always is seeming like the bad person. He was just exclaiming why he thinks that is because you are a C. That is it. He didn't just call her that. I thought he just called her that. It's kind of different when someone uh, says, you know, why does this keep happening? And then he screams it out. I'm not saying that he was right for saying it. I don't like it, but I, it's kind of different because he's not just starting or instigating. He's always the one retaliating and being talked to before actually making those remarks. I think these are interesting points. This is not. This is your last week. This is your last week. This is your last call. Hey, hey, here's a question. If you're going to film it and you know you're going to film things, leave, leave it somewhere where you're not going to put it in your pocket and actually do a marathon with Usain Bolt at this hour. Yeah, you can see Johnny's face. Even he was like, ah, crap, I shouldn't have called her a stupid fuck. Well, I guess it's time to ask the question. Have you ever fought with someone? Have you ever said something to someone? that you probably regret i know i have i've definitely done it uh i've not said anything you know illegal but i've i've said some things that i wish i could take back especially when i was younger i've said some hurtful things that i didn't know maybe could affect a person in that way and i think given another chance i would never say them i think there have been so many times i've had fights with girls that they have said some stuff that i am sure they would have taken back I am 100% sure, because if they don't take it back, they are very mean people. <laughs> in the heat of the moment, you say some things. And Johnny's saying, you stupid fuck, in the context of an argument, a fight with your significant other where tensions are high, might not be the worst thing that you've ever said. Saying that she's a shit actor and never would get work ever again, that's bad. 
calling her a whore slut or saying that she has no value in life, that would be pretty bad. Should the single cell prick decide to push it, he never forgets me and will always be remembered throughout his life as the guy that got his fucking nose bit off, chewed up and swallowed by Johnny Depp. I'd like to turn to your views on Miss Heard's career. Oh, okay. We're just going to ignore that one too. Right, of course. You're just proving that you can read things. I'm not even going to ask him about who he, who that was in reference to, why that was said, what the context was. Mr. Rottenborn, I feel like you're not actually doing your job here. I would at least ask Johnny uh, what was that in regards to and if that was a hyperbole, why was it even said in the first place? Why was it brought up? Why did uh, What sparked you to even text that? What was brought upon by saying that? And could you have handled it in a way that was different to as not, you know, uh, sort of implicate yourself in that way? Because I feel like, uh, if anything, that evidence there could show that he, he has some sort of jealous tendencies. If we were playing that angle, maybe, maybe we had other things. He was talking about James Franco and how he felt that Amber cheated with him. And he also was talking about that girl, what's the name? Kellyanne? Kelly Sue? He said that she was getting a bit too inappropriate with his girlfriend. So clearly, this man has a thematic nature of... Maybe a little jealousy. And I did, like I said, just to do my due diligence, I did actually read up on him. And his ex did say that he was quite a jealous man. So maybe there's some validity in that. I don't know why you guys are not playing that angle. I'm just saying. I'm not on your team. But if I was, you know. And then you respond, holy crap, whores. No goddamn meetings. That's a great start to a sentence. Holy crap, whores, SpongeBob. What the schnitzels? No movies. Why? Why do you deviate from our agreement? What species of meeting? Fuck it. Just tell me when you get home. Yeah, what, what about it? What, what is this text? What, what are you showing me? How is this proving anything? Are you going to hold a microwave up to me and be like, See? I, this is not going anywhere. Right after you had suffered an injury to your finger, you text Dr. Kipper and you say, Hi. Fucked, man. Great sentence again. Oh, I love the I would love to text Johnny. Hi. Fucked, man. <laughs> I love how it's like he, this reads like someone who's got like 18 personalities. Hello, fucked man. What's up, bro? Hate it. Had another one. I just cannot live like this. She is as full of shit as a Christmas goose. I cut the top of my middle finger off. She is as a fool of a shit as a Christmas goose. Ah. Lo just fantastic. Fantastic, Johnny. What should I do? Except, of course, go to a hospital. I'm so embarrassed for jumping into anything with her. Fuck the world. Did I read that right? Yes, you did, bro. Still, admit to him that you cut the top of your middle finger off, correct? Objection compound. You're complaining about her ambition in this text to her. To, to Dr. Kipper, correct? Um, I'm realizing that her ambition is far stronger than her... Uh, supposed feelings for me, yes. Fuck the world. And there's nothing about this text that's trying to protect her. And from, from what? Trying to, yeah, what are you protecting her from? Huh? Well, she got some people after her. She got the mafioso. Who she got? Tony Soprano after her? Come on, man. Hey, Johnny, protect me. Hey, Johnny, protect me because because Joey Forehead is trying to he's trying to come after me. And he, he's bringing his boy, uh, Larry Long Locks. And he's also bringing his homie. Uh, Gary Good Dick, you know he's he's bringing the boys there, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna really get me. So I need some help, Johnny Johnny Brasco over there. And you tell Dr. Kipper I cut the top of my middle finger off in this text, correct? It's just the way it was worded. It doesn't mean that no. I actually literally cut my finger off after at the age of twelve finding the only thing that gave me a peace, which is playing the guitar. Very unlikely. Why didn't I start lopping off digits when I was uh, 13? Then? Just the way it was worded. Now, Miss Heard, yeah. Miss Heard wasn't the only one who had a... Okay, well, he's not going to do his job, so I'll do it for him. I would, if I was on Amber's uh, lawyer's team, I would uh, say that's not relevant, what he just said. And I would say that it has little to no relevance how you acted at 12 or 13, because in the heat of the moment, in the heat of a fight, you could be doing something like this. I would also ask, then why would you say it like that if that wasn't truth? I would probably press more on the matter. Uh, now, if I'm on Johnny's side, which I am... I would uh, argue that even though he said I, one, just a way of writing things, two, could have been a misspelling, three, 
This man has been quoted multiple times as trying to hide the injury so as not to implicate Ms. Hood and get her into trouble. So I think that's sort of why he was doing it. He just didn't want to get his spouse or significant other in trouble or in deepest shit that you could already be in. So that's it. So it's, it's looking good for him. Now, Miss Heard wasn't the only one who had a problem with your drinking. Your Honor, I'm, I'm trying to move this along. Well, and when we stop with relevance... Well, I just, I just, you want to lay a foundation? I just don't... Fuck the world. This is a picture of Mr. Depp. Now, Mr. Depp, you testified on Thursday that you saw nothing wrong with referring to Amber as a lesbian camp counselor when she was trying to get you to stop using drugs. That's just hilarious. Uh, objection. Funny. Objection. Goddamn, that's a good one. <laughs> Carry on. But... She Let's take a look at what same, you say in she this used text. That term before in she... this text, Mr. Depp, you say, just to let you know that I'm fine, my angel. I miss you, of course, but this was the right thing to do to speed up the process. I love you more than life. Oh, you got him. You got him, Mr. Rottenborn. I love you more than life, my angel. Oh, wow. He's trying to turn her into an angel by, by saying that he's going to kill her. That's why he's using the word angel. When I use the word sweetheart, it's because I want to eat someone's heart because it's so sweet, like a candy. I'm just like, oh, I'm a cannibal. That's it. This lawsuit about the op-ed specifically, but for years prior to the date that Ms. Heard wrote the op-ed, there were numerous negative news stories about you. You'd agree with that, correct? Yes. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this, Johnny. Yes, because he has worked in Hollywood for like 40 years, and if he had no stories about him that were bad, you could kiss the fattest part of my ass. I don't think that's even a thing. Who? Who's your favorite celebrity? Huh? Who? What? Donald Trump? Who else? Gary Busey. Yeah, just, yeah, just, just look him up. He's got some articles. Nicolas Cage got some bad articles. I don't think Nicolas Cage did a bad thing in his life. There were lots of negative stories me. about you prior to... God damn, bro. Use them. Just, you can hold the mic further away, you know? There are no stories. Jesus Christ. Mr. Rotten Button. May 27th, 2016. There are plenty of negative stories about you prior to that date, weren't there? Why don't you read all the positive stories? You Why don't you read that, huh? Mr. Rotten Button, why don't you read that? I've been drinking, but why don't you read... All the positive stories. Johnny Depp goes uh, to Make-A-Wish Foundation in his spare time to make sure the kids are okay. Johnny Depp does nice shit for people. Johnny Depp always do free things. He gives money away like it's going out of style. Huh? How about how about you read any of that stuff? Oh, it's only negative, huh? Negative Nelly. Well, you can suck on my gonads, bro. I'll tell you what, Mr. Rottenborn. You just came into contact with Loyalio. I am the lawyer they provide you when your actual one doesn't turn out. Apparently drunk. Yes, and this is a, an article from Sep, from November 15th, 2014. Nice. Good. You read the date correctly. Let me let me have it. Entitled, Apparently Drunk. Oh, well, the article's already wrong. Apparently. Hey, how about this? Apparently, Rotten Bone has one-inch penis. Well, now what? You got an article written about you. So? Is it true? I, I, unless you, it could be, but I don't think it is, so. Is an article from May 7th, 2016, entitled Johnny Depp, Friends and Family Seriously Concerned About Him, Here's Why. Yeah, okay, that's a clickbait title, just like in any video on uh, YouTube. David Dobrik does videos. Uh, she just found out, dot, dot, dot. What? That's fine. Is this an article? Is this, I'm sorry, is this evidence? <laughs> Please. This is what we got with Do David Dobrik evidence? Oh, wow. The next article from May 1st, 2017, before yes, Miss Heard filed uh, for a restraining order. Johnny Depp has a clear and epic sense of entitlement, ex managers say. You always gotta you always gotta trust people who are then fired by them. Don't trust people who work for them currently or people who've been working for Johnny Depp for like thirty years, like his bodyguards. Don't trust them. Trust the people who have been ex or excommunicated from his circle they'll always have good things to say i know all the friends that i kicked out have great things to say about me great carry on please johnny depp a star in crisis and the insane story of his missing millions yeah so how does that have anything to do with anything after a string of flops and a ton of bad press johnny depp's star power looks as wobbly as jack sparrow on a plank is it I thought Alice in Wonderland made a billion dollars. That was pretty recent. Uh, okay, I'm not saying that the man makes only hits, but he's if he's worth $650 million, I, I think it's fair to say that the hits outweigh the flops, you know?
the worst evidence that you could possibly use in a case. So what are you? What are we sitting here for? Next one, Hollywood Reporter, May twenty seventh, two thousand seventeen. Headline: Pirates of the Caribbean: The Diminishing Returns of Johnny Depp. Did I read that right? Diminishing return. Total of five films. Box office: four point five two billion dollars in the five films. A franchise carried by Johnny Depp, seeing as he is the star of the movie. They also have Disney rides, merchandise, and every single thing else. If he is diminishing, I don't want to know what flourishing is. Please, please, son, get yourself an idea, champ. You certainly did. Hollywood Reporter were very nice to me at the time. July 12th, 2017. Why are all of Johnny Depp's movies bombing at the box office? Oh, that was after 2016. I thought you were only talking about pre-Amber Hood, right? All right, whatever. When Amber made those accusations, it said you lost, quote, nothing less than everything, correct? That is correct. You didn't have a divorce trial. Because uh, Johnny Depp was dropped, I think, a few days after that op-ed came out, it's sort of fair to say that with general um, belief being held that Disney might have dropped them due to seeing that or due to not wanting the bad publicity because of the Me Too movement and things that have happened, Harvey Weinstein, Etika, Etika, that's what I say, etc. Just leave me alone. On the other end, and uh, the end that I would argue if I was on Amber's team, is that you can't actually prove that Disney dropped uh, Johnny Depp because of that, because nobody actually said it. So him saying that at this moment is uh, Mr. Rottenberg's favorite word, hearsay. ...to Amber's accusations of abuse, did you? For instance, no matter how good Amber Heard was, say she had Meryl Streep's level of acting, and she was the exact same person that she is in terms of how she treats Johnny, would anybody watch her movies? No. And if you want an example of a clear-cut person who has massive talent, but people don't watch their movies... Kevin Spacey, extremely talented individual. I don't think I've watched a movie of his since I found out about his stuff. And I, he was my f one of my favorite actors before. So this is the only writing that you are. That's the subject of this lawsuit that you brought, correct? Is a version of that story of the op-ed that I have never seen. The one that was published before the one that the only one I've ever seen is the one that was published prior to this they changed the title yeah i, I want to know what the original title is the original op-ed seems to have been deleted and uh i i want to know what the original has all right mr depp is this the version of the op-ed that you recognize yes ma'am when did you see miss Hurd's december 18th 2018 op-ed for the first time a couple of days of it having been written i i, I believe and oh that's the original that was the original piece okay now it has a little more to do with Oh, who was Amber with at the time? What did she say? I know that she didn't name him, but in a lot of the article, you can probably make inference to who she's talking about, seeing as that they were dating and she was talking about it at the time, so. What was your reaction when you saw it? Shock. Why were you shocked? I just couldn't believe that it, that it was continuing. How did you feel when you saw the op-ed for the first time? Hurt. Yeah, a, a, a blinding... Um, a blinding hurt. I feel like you can see Johnny, and I don't know if this is just him being a fantastic actor, honestly, because he is a fantastic actor. But I, I feel like it's real. I feel like when she asked, how did that make you feel? And he took a second to think about it and probably went through his mind of everything that he went through since that article was dropped. He felt hurt. I don't, I don't, think, there's, uh, I don't think there's something more infuriating in the world when people don't believe you, but you're telling the truth. I think that's why uh, victims of SA and TA just, they, they have that feeling of, oh, nobody's going to believe me. And it's that frustration. And it's the same thing because Johnny Depp is essentially a survivor of DA and SA. And nobody believed him for so long because in society, we believe the woman we're more inclined to because more often than not, uh, it is it is the woman who's getting taken advantage of. I, I mentioned, I made uh, some sort of hint to the fact that it had happened to me. And I'll tell you what, like, I'm not going to tell you what happened, but I didn't know that it was even considered that until years later. I thought that I just had to accept it because I was like, oh, yeah, the girl just does that. But that's not true. I can see how as a guy, you probably don't know what to do. And also, if you do know what to do, 
chances of you being taken seriously, and that's just not a thing. How many times would I have had to tell someone before someone actually believed me? It's crazy. How did you feel when you learned that you were being dropped from the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise? <clears throat> Captain Jack Sparrow was a character that I had built from the ground up. After that long relationship and quite a successful relationship, suddenly I was guilty until proven innocent. Ah, uh, there's another thing that I want to bring up is that, yeah, I think as a man in society, <laughs> especially when dealing with something like this, you are oftentimes guilty until proven innocent, which is crazy. And if you want to go back, uh, if you look at Tupac, he went to jail for something that he did that the woman actually came out and said is not actually true. If you want to look back, go to a person called Emmett Till. Now this boy was a little boy who got his face absolutely beaten. He, he died. Because apparently, a white girl had said, this was back in the early days, the 20s or 30s, a white girl had said that he was looking at her and making like cat calls. Before she died, recently, on her deathbed, she said she made it up. There's got to be a system where we have equality. Johnny then shows him, uh, shows people his Pirates of the Caribbean contract. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, $25 million for compensation, $10 million in much. My goodness, man. How many other franchise films have you been a part of? What was the question again? Uh, how many... Uh I have order other in the court, or I will have you removed. How many other franchise films had you been a part of at the time of this contract? Fantastic Beasts. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't actually say this before, but this is redirect. So after you have cross-examination, you have one more time where your own team gets to redirect and possibly, uh, let's say in layman's terms, clear up any of the loose ends that were probably happening due to the other lawyers. So if any of the objections happen or if they made him look bad, they're like, okay, let me just show you what the actual thing was. Message with Mr. Bettany that you were shown on your cross-examination. Oh, yeah. Could you please describe to the jury what you are conveying to Mr. Bettany in this message? Everything that I say here is, in fact, an impossibility for the human body. Do you remember seeing this during Mr. Bontorn's examination of you last week? Yeah, yes, I do. Now, I'd like to show you the, the full text exchange, which is in Plaintiff's Exhibit 120. Mr. Duck, who are you communicating with in these text messages? Oh, in fact, though it says Marino, um, I was, these are texts between my um, ex, uh, let's say that Vanessa Parody, the mother of my children. Yeah, so this is a text message that was actually brought up earlier by Mr. Rottenburn, and it is not about Miss Amber Hood. It's actually about Johnny's ex-wife, and it's a little humor. Like I said, he has grotesque humor. I don't exactly necessarily agree with it, but hey. And what are you and Mr. Dieters discussing here? Because he's the worrisome type. I, I would send him a text in jest, of course, to get a rise out of him, to get some reaction out of him. So, um, you, you know, I would tell him things like, uh, you know, I woke up and um, I'm bleeding profusely from, from the inside of my ear. Is that normal? It was, it was a joke to just sort of throw him off, worry him, and make, ultimately, it was a joke, and we, we were laughing about it. Mr. Depp, what is okay, so I think, um, you know, with reasonable doubt, I think I can believe that. I don't think any man is going to... Say the words, can I put a, can I wear a condom all day? Like, I, I don't think at this age of your life, you'd be asking that question, especially after you have kids. I think with reasonable doubt, it's fair to say this man was joking. Through the roof. Why are you informing Miss Heard that there's a book called Disco Bloodbath? I, I, that, when I texted her, yeah, 2.30 in the afternoon, I was, uh, I was in a bookstore, um, a, a, a used bookstore. Where I, uh, um, so now we'll talk about the bloodbath evidence. Um, he just likes to say the word bloodbath, but apparently Johnny Depp just had passed on a bookstore and said that, hey, there's a book called Disco Bloodbath. Just just wanted you to know that. That's it. And I am inclined to believe him again, because if it was a bad text message, I think they would have been able to show more. It hasn't been ever a one-on-one -on -one text message from Amber Heard and Johnny Depp in which Johnny Depp was openly hostile to her. Yes, he said some stuff that was uh, weird humor behind her back, sometimes about her, sometimes not, but there hasn't ever been anything directly where he's like, you effing this or you effing that. So you can't claim that he's ever said anything to her besides calling her a fat ass. What he heads in this exchange whatsoever it was very lighthearted. Mr. Depp, I'd like to show you Defendant's Exhibit 375, which is another document Mr. Rottenborn showed you last week. Yes. Um, could you please remind the jury what's reflected in this photograph? The tip of my finger had been... 
Look at this photograph. Every time I do, I get confused. Who the hell wrote that in black? Someone wrote that shit in red too. So by the way, this happens after uh, Johnny Depp gets his finger severed. And I don't know if they really go into detail about that, but yeah. So what happens is Amber Heard throws a vodka bottle at the wall, then misses and throws another one at his hand, causing it to sever and come off. The top of the hand comes off. Now, there is a picture and you can see it if you want to. I'm squeamish and when I saw it, I almost died. It's looking like Amber is going to, and I quote, lose this like Weight Watchers. Ms. Heard had come to me, and she was seriously, seemed to be seriously concerned about how she was being portrayed in, in Hollywood. Can I, how can I avoid being stereotyped as the, as the beautiful blonde who, who gets her breasts out or goes naked and has to shook people in, in movies? Uh, yeah, so Johnny Depp then starts talking about like Amber Heard and him were having a fight, and she said, how can I... Uh, avoid the stereotype of being that beautiful blonde in Hollywood. Uh, learn how to act. You know who is a beautiful blonde in Hollywood? Meryl Streep, and she's a fan friggin' tastic actor. Also, Kate Blanchett, who is, you know, very good looking, but also, my God, is she a good actress? You know what I mean? Like, Johnny Depp was world's sexiest man. I don't know how they figure out the world's sexiest man. Unlike many people who ride their f uh, looks to success, he actively avoided it. I'm saying this man did everything he could to use anything but his looks to convince people that he was a good actor. And that's probably what he was telling Amber Heard, but she just does not have the skill that Mr. Depp has. Show you one of the text messages that Mr. Rottenborn showed you concerning the injury to your finger. So if we could please pull up Defendant's Exhibit 398. What did you mean when you said, I have chopped off my left middle finger as a reminder that I should never cut off, cut my right finger off again? It's, again, it's my way of dealing with, um, dealing with a painful situation. It's, it's, it's my way of dealing with a painful situation where I resort to humor. So I have lost the tip of my right finger. And so I'm saying to him, I've now cut off my left finger to remind me never to cut my right finger off. When you say I got my finger cut off or I cut my finger off or this or that, it doesn't necessarily mean that you did it. So Johnny Depp is then explaining uh, to the jury that he actually, of course, did not cut his own finger off and he uses his humor as a shield or defense mechanism to uh, make light of a dark situation. Now, if you don't believe that, that's fine. But here's me proving you wrong. He calls his finger Little Richard because it's uh, smaller than the others because of the chop off. If that's not dark humor, I don't know what is. And like we said, we have literal evidence of him going into that make a wish thing and where the kid says, hey, what happened to your finger? And he says, I bit it off. I, I just... Oh. Had you told him what had actually happened to your right finger? Oh, 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 oh yes. yes. And, and when did you tell him that? Jerry was aware of it. Stephen was. Everyone was aware of it. And and when I and of course yes, when I went to the doctor, the emergency room, I lied to them because I didn't I didn't think it wise to cause a ruckus, implicate Miss Heard, and then have eight million stories out in the press about <clears throat> how she thrown a bottle of vodka at my at me and it smashed the all the bones in the tip of my finger and cut off. Oh, it was all sliced down. You've seen the pictures. So you're telling me Johnny Depp basically lied in order to protect the person who severed off his finger. And people have the nerve to call this guy bad? I doubt it, man. I doubt it. Yes. Okay. Um, I'd like to play a different portion of that recording. That will make it worse. No. I guarantee you it will. If you're, if you're talking throwing punches. I'm not talking about throwing punches. I'm talking about an argument. Right. In arguments, you tend to throw punches. I'm talking about arguments. I'm not talking about the times when it's not physical. I'm talking about arguments. I'm talking about arguments. I'm not talking about the times when it got physical. If you have to say that in a relationship, you probably need to question it. Oh, Amber Heard looking worse by the minute. She's looking like she got left out of the herd of cows. The idiot cows, man. Oh my God. Mr. Depp, I'd like to ask you about a couple text messages from May, 20, excuse me, May 22nd, 2016 that Mr. Rottenborn asked you about um, earlier. Um, and before I do, could you please remind the jury what was going on between you and Ms. Heard, between you and Ms. Heard on May 22nd, 2016? Do you recall sending this text message to Ms. Heard on May 22nd, 2016 at 6, 19 p.m.? Yes, I do. Um, what did you mean when you told her nothing I have to say to you should elicit anything but a sense of... Essentially, for me, it was a, I was bringing up what I'd spoken to her about before, which was a peaceful resolution to the problems, a peaceful resolution in terms of a peaceful and private and quiet and calm divorce and that is probably the most telling thing that in privacy and uh with regards to everything that johnny depp is as a character this man is a reserved person he is not a person who is seeking things he's not a person who wants to uh make others feel bad he's not a person that ever wanted hurt he just wanted 
to live his life and he unfortunately got caught up with the wrong goal that's that's my assessment of the situation because by knowing his movies by being a fan for so long and not a fan like Pirates of the Caribbean I'm a fan like Donnie Brasco type so I, I seen him do that I seen him go out of his way to avoid fame by just doing service to the art and now he meets a girl who wants to get into the art and have the fame that he has, even though he didn't try to get it. And now she's fighting and she is trying to get $7 million in a divorce, which she got and said that she's going to pay and give all to charity and the Me Too movement. And it wasn't given. So by all accounts, everything that we're seeing, we're seeing a man who has kept true on his word and has been pretty, pretty self contained and very shy and very stoic and also very sensitive and then we have a girl who has been bombastic and lying and caught just in her own web of lies and wanting something more than what she has who would you believe really who would you believe so does that seem normal to you does that seem normal to you you told me tonight that you couldn't imagine your life without me and now you're calling everyone on the ground does that seem normal that's how you tell me that seems sober you seem normal you does that seem normal does that seem normal to you? Borderline personality disorder. I'm borderline personality disorder now. Without question. When I've been consistent all night saying, don't go, don't fuck this all up. I'm not fighting with you anymore. Insulting. Please, call me. I'm not insulting you. I have not been insulting you. I love you. Johnny, what do you mean me to do? I love you. Oh. Yeah, I know crazy bitches. Yeah, I've been in, and I've been in that situation, man. I'm sorry. I'm just going through it. She don't make no sense, but she's saying things loudly, and you have to be like, whoa, calm down, lady. Mr. Depp, um, I'm gonna play another audio recording. This is a different portion from what Mr. Rottenborn played for you today. Stop pushing me! Stop pushing me in the corner and then poking me in the stick and then saying, why are you saying the words you want me to say? Stop poking me! Stop pushing me! Stop throwing me against the wall! What? You like the wall? You don't like the fucking wall? Stop pushing me! I'm rushing you. I said, I need space. I don't want this conversation anymore right now. I need space. And I will take my space. Whether you like it or not, I will take it. He said, I will take my space, not I will come into your space. She said, why are you pushing and proking and prodding me? And she always says, but, you know, she is coming in, knocking on the doors, but Johnny is evading her. He is an evasive person. I'll tell you what, man, it seems like Amber is just the person who tries to instigate and start things. She is always the one more frantic than Johnny and always provoking Johnny to give her a reaction. It's crazy. Amber, I, I lost a fucking finger, man. Come on. I had a fucking, I had a fucking, a middle can of jar of can of middle spirits on my nose. Tell the wall, Johnny, see what the jury says. And so he did, Amber. And so he did. That is the way I'm going to end this testimony. I know there's more things. I might have missed a couple things. I'm sorry if I did. It is a long trial. But the next video will be talking about the witnesses. And also we are going to look at Amber Heard's cross-examination. Because that deserves its own video. I would love to cross-examine her myself. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why that sounded dirty. But um, my goodness. Isn't that a fantastic uh, trial? Isn't it a fantastic testimony to see... Amber Heard pretty much indict herself in every way, shape, or form by saying, I, did, I didn't punch you, I just hit you. She, she uses those words, she doesn't deny them. And whenever we look at Johnny and the evidence brought against him, it's, I've been sleeping. Uh, yeah, I drank a little bit. I might have, uh, that's it. You never caught him screaming. You never caught him saying anything to her face. But you did catch her saying, yeah, like, you know, I'm sorry that I, I'm sorry that the door did that. Uh, yeah, tell the world, Johnny, you think that this is crazy. Okay, I threw pots and pans, so what? It's always that. It's that sense of, I can do no wrong because I'm the goal and I see myself in the right. And Amber just has never seen herself in the wrong. And I don't know if she's listening to these trials back thinking, oh, maybe I did do something wrong. But she certainly is feeling the pressure. I'll tell you one thing, looking at her from 2016 to 2022, it looks like she ages at least 20 years. And I'll tell you, man, that stress is getting so hard, whether she says it or not, whether she admits it or not. And uh, before long, I think she's going to be $50 million in Johnny debt. Anyway, thank you so much. That is the video. Um, I would love to see the next part i'm hoping i can do the witnesses for you please tell me if you liked the video if you did then like it and subscribe it um if anybody did leave a tip uh, i'm just gonna say thank you so much I, I still don't know how that works but anyway um i yeah i can't wait to see you in the next one where we do the witnesses and then cross-examination loyal leo is back for at least two more videos and maybe more if you guys want to see some
until then thank you so much love you take care she ain't even got a ass she did a dash and bit a last you know a dash and she know baby